Hey guys, so this vlog is a unique vlog today. We are going to be doing a tour of Paul's guns. He's excited to do this vlog. And I am. <laughs> I'm excited to take you guys along. Now this vlog is mainly about safety, how Paul handles things, and his ideals. Everybody has their own opinion, so teach his own. So if guns make you uncomfortable, definitely check out one of our other vlogs. Now, keep in mind, every single weapon that I have here has been safety checked. There is no ammunition anywhere in the weapons uh, themselves. I have been using guns since I was about eight years old, so I have been taught very well how to use them, how to manipulate them, and everything. So, everything is safe. So guys, let's get started, shall we? is going to be with me your favorite i know but size of ryan i know i'm number two Ooh, i'm still here behind the camera guys so <laughs> whatever about that comment yeah anyways so this is going to be kind of a controversial subject some people do not agree with firearms some people love them i'm someone who i have been into firearms since i was about eight years old when my dad got me my first rifle which i do still have these are just some of my my firearms that i have i do have others some of them I am currently building, some of them I am currently modifying, painting, stuff like that. I'm just going to give a quick overview of why I have some of these guns, what, what are some of their uses for, and why I will enjoy them. First and foremost, uh, you know, I do have a bunch of firearms here. There are different guns for different reasons, different purposes. Some of them are actually just fun guns. I did collect these over several years so it's not like I bought everything overnight because this can be a very very expensive hobby very quickly some of them are for personal protection home protection and then again some of them are just for fun now we will going to start with what I carry daily for those of you who do not know I do have a concealed weapon permit in for the state of Florida and I carry my firearm with me every single day when I leave my house I never leave my house without a gun on my hip some people are going to say, well, that's crazy, that's too much. This is just something that I want to do to protect my family and myself. So my first two guns, these are the ones that I have daily carried for years, is going to be my Glock 19. This is the holster that I have it in. Everything has been safety cleared. This one does actually have a flashlight on it. This is my daily carry. This is one that I carry each and every single day. I've done a few modifications to it. Some sights, magwell, flashlight, couple grip tape here and there. This is my first gun. Janice actually got me this gun as a birthday gift. Please don't throw me under the bus. Don't, don't, no, no. <laughs> this was a gift from her. I absolutely loved it. This was my first actual handgun and I carried it for years. I still carry it now. I have different types of magazines for it. I have the standard 15 rounds, longer magazines. This is what stays on my night table. So at night, I have it with this magazine with 19 rounds with the flashlight on my night table. So if I hear that bump in the night, this is going to be the first thing that my hands grab because it's a perfect weapon. I have plenty of rounds and a flashlight so I can see at night. Now, mind you, I am trying to learn a little bit about guns because, you know, Paul will never give up. Nope. Never. Is, uh... Expensive hobby. Exactly. <laughs> so we actually have funny names for me to remember them. And the age is, the age is the bullet. The caliber of the bullet. Yeah. So, so. this one is Jezebel. Jezebel, yeah. She's nine years old because <laughs> she shoots nine millimeters. That's how I okay. remember, guys. Paul thought it was so stupid. Yeah, I know. I, I call her Jezzy. Jezzy keeps me safe. Hmm. Which one's Tiffany? This one is... This one's Tiffany? I think that one's Tiffany. Yeah, this yeah. one's Tiffany. Okay. How old is Tiffany? I think she was 21. Tiffany is 38. 38, yeah, she's an old because bitch. Because this is a <laughs> six-shot 38 special revolver. These are my two carry guns. Why would you need two? Because obviously, number one, size difference. This one's a lot smaller than the Glock. This one's also a really heavy one you have all around. This one weighs less than a pound. 
So this is again my 38 Special Revolver from Taurus. This is an ultralight. This weighs actually less than a pound. It is a six shot 38 Special. I have my little leather holster in it. And I can actually carry this gun with basketball shorts. It's yes. that light and, and comfortable. I literally forget that I'm carrying this gun sometimes and I absolutely love it. Now, this is the gun that Janice loves out of all of, yes. out of, all of these. Yes, it's the easiest for me to this shoot. This is like the old Clint Eastwood, Wild Wild West, you have to pull the hammer back in order to actually fire the weapon. I pretend um, I'm Woody. <laughs> <laughs> this one's just a fun gun. This one was like 120 bucks at Academy and it shoots 22 long rifle. So it has no kick. It's perfect. Janice loves shooting this gun. It's a lot of fun. Because she's 22. She's 22. Because mm -hmm. I'm 22 too. <laughs> uh, again, this is just a fun gun and it's cheap. A lot of people like it. I, this is one of the guns that I use to teach people how to shoot. I have actually taught a lot of people how to shoot, family members, friends, stuff like that, and I always start them off here because it's one of the simplest guns to actually use. So now we're gonna move on to rifles. I do have two AR-15s. A lot of people have huge issues with people owning these weapons as they say that they are, you know, assault rifles, military grade rifles, these are not considered military in any way or form because these are semi-automatic. These are considered sporting rifles. I do have magazines. These are 30 round magazines. I have several of them. I have military style like steel mag and the modern polymer P mags. These guns are a lot of fun. They are used for military, police. Military actually does not use AR-15s. There's our M4s because they are fully automatic. Civilians cannot have an M4 because you have to have so many permits and taxing and it's really difficult for a civilian to actually obtain a fully automatic rifle. These two that I have here, I actually built myself. So I bought the parts kit and I built all the lower part and the upper part where the barrel came pre-manufactured. Now these guns, they do get expensive after you start putting a lot of things on the gun themselves. So, you know, this one, for example, I have two scopes. I have a long distance scope and then I have a offset green dot scope. This one is an olive drab green. I like the kind of military green look to it. This is a standard AR-15 rifle because it has a 16 inch barrel. This is now my AR-15 pistol. Yes, this is actually considered a pistol. This is a rifle. This is a rifle because it has a buttstock and a 16 inch barrel. This is not a buttstock. This is actually designed for you to open this up and stick your hand through and you grab it like that and that's how you actually shoot and manipulate the firearm. You don't have to shoot it like that. You can actually shoot it up against your cheek and the newest rules of the ATF, you can actually temporarily put it up against your shoulder to fire the weapon. Notice how every time I manipulate the weapon, my finger is completely out of the trigger guard. This is just muscle memory, years, training, always remembering that the trigger, your finger only goes on the trigger when you actually are ready to shoot. You know, let's say you're at the range, you present the firearm, make sure it's always pointed in a safe direction, aim, take your safety off, put your finger on the trigger, and then you fire, and instantly, once you're done, you put your safety back on. These are things that a lot of new shooters forget, and it's muscle memory. You just have to keep training and keep doing it to understand how to actually use and manipulate the firearm safely. Yes, this is a firearm, but I'll tell you this right now, it can be one of the safest, most fun things you can do as long as you know what you're doing. So as far as rifles go, this handgun is my go-to home defense and one of my personal favorite carry guns. This one is my favorite home defense firearm for rifles or pistol, you know, larger caliber guns. This has a red dot sight on it. And there's the red dot itself. Now this red dot is really cool because it actually turns on by itself once the weapon moves. I can put this down in my safe on my night table. It'll turn off by itself to save battery. And as soon as I actually move the gun, it turns itself back on. And then I also have backup iron sights. So let's say if my optic fails, I can still successfully shoot the firearm using my backup iron sights that fold down. And then I have a magnifier. The magnifier you pull back over and this magnifies it three times zoom so you can have shots more accurately at distance. All of these AR-15s are chambered in 5.56 and 223, which is the most popular round for AR-15 rifles. They do have different chamberings, 300 blackout, 762 by 39 
you know, Janice always says math when it comes to Western. Oh my goodness, numbers. nope, nope, too much math. <laughs> but these guns are a lot of fun to shoot. Every time I take them out, people love it. They like the look because they're just, they look clean, they look cool, they're fun, and they're actually super, super useful. A lot of people put different things on guns that are kind of stupid. The only thing that I really need for this one is a flashlight. And again, this is kind of like my, you know, it hits the fan, you know what I mean? And, you know, I can grab this rifle, grab my handgun, and I can make sure that me and my family are safe. So, this is one of the steel magazines. This is what standard military uses. It is empty. So, this is so you can see what these weapons look like with a magazine inserted into them. Now, this is a standard capacity 30 round mag. They do have larger capacity, 40 rounds, 60, even like 100 drum round those kind of get like little they're like the spinner hubcaps rims of the gun world kind of you know what i mean they're really useless they're just a cool thing to pull out of the range and show people you spent 200 dollars on a magazine <laughs> so again this one's completely empty all the guns have been safety checked these are my guns so this is my bolt action marksman rifle a lot of people will call it a sniper rifle yes it is a hunting rifle is what it's for this is a bolt action, so I have to actually cycle this every time I want to fire the gun. You pull the trigger, the bullet goes out, and then another one goes in. This has a magazine that holds four bullets. Now, this one actually is in cha is chambered in 308. To give you an idea, this is a standard 556 or 223 sized round for AR-15s. This one is 308. This is a much larger caliber bullet and it has you know greater distance and it has greater stopping power so this is an excellent hunting rifle for boar bear deer elk stuff like that lions tigers and bears only <laughs> tiger king yes yeah. this one i you know is not a self defense gun this is not the first thing that i'm going to grab this is a hunting rifle and a marksman rifle it has a scope that i can shoot very easily up to 600 yards out to and I have some ammunition here on the side as well. This gun is a lot of fun to shoot. The only problem is that it gives you a headache every time you shoot it. <laughs> because it has a strong kick, right? Yeah, the kick is really, is really strong and it's really loud. I still love it. I always, always, always have wanted a marksman rifle like this. And just going out to the range, you sit there on the bench and you have to, you know, hold it level. I have this little level up here. The, the rifle's level because the scope actually has um, a vertical horizontal line and the vertical line has little tick marks that show me 100 meters, 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600. So when I want to shoot something at 300 meters, I need to make sure the gun is level and aim higher up for compensating the curvature of the bullet and the drop. This gun's a lot of fun to shoot. I love it. Like just going out to the range, because you don't shoot this very fast. You literally just sit there, you aim, you have to wait, concentrate on your breathing, and concentrate on your trigger pull to get accurate shots. At 100 yards, I'm putting targets within an inch and an inch and a quarter at 100 yards. So it is very accurate. It is so much fun to shoot, and I can't wait to take Janice so she can get scared on it. I'm not shooting that. <laughs> So obviously you, when you have firearms like this, it's always a good idea to stock up on ammunition for exactly these reasons with the pandemic and also just for when we want to go to the range. I do have ammo for my 22 long rifle, which again, that rifle is not out here. I have plenty of nine millimeter ammunition as well as 223 rifle for my AR-15. So I always have in my safe, Brand new boxes of ammunition. This is 308 for my hunting marksman rifle and 9mm for my handgun. Um, 9mm is the most popular round for handguns in the United States of America. So right now during this whole coronavirus thing, it is impossible to find this ammunition. It is impossible. You go to a store, they will laugh at you if you ask, hey, do you have any 9mm? and as well as 5.56 and 2.23. With all this, everything that's going on with the coronavirus, there is less crime, but guess what? All the gun stores are sold out of guns, all the gun stores are sold out of ammo. So again, it's not a question of guns are the problem, people are the problem. You know, if you have a bad person with a gun, they're gonna do bad things. So a lot of people, you know, when they see my collection, and again, this is only some of my guns, I do have more. People kind of have this negative connotation like, oh, you must be crazy for having this many guns, or there is no need to have this many guns. 
so on and so forth. And, you know, this is a hobby. At the end of the day, some of these guns are only shot for fun, and some of them are just for, you know, doing something different, like a marksman rifle like this. I have my very first 12 gauge shotgun, which I have done different upgrades. I've painted it tan, added some different grips, different stock, and this one I do kind of like skeet shooting where you throw the clays in the air and you shoot it with this. This is not the most ideal shotgun for that. This one, when I first purchased it, was for home defense, but I have several other weapons that are for home defense as well. And this one usually just stays in my safe, handguns out, and then my AR-15 pistols out during the night times. There is always going to be this negative thing that people say, you know, the AR-15s are causes for mass shootings and stuff like that. And it is a very touchy subject. I get that. But responsible gun owners like myself are not the ones to blame for certain things. I have been taught by people who are military and police how to shoot, how to manipulate firearms. Everything I do with guns, I have a super high you know, uh, re requirement of safety and precautions because these are firearms, you have to be safe with them. And as long as you are safe with them, nothing is ever gonna happen. These guns are never gonna accidentally shoot by themselves, you know? These are things that people have, again, negative connotations towards firearms. These are a tool. They're as good or as bad as the person's hands you give them to. You know what I mean? You can kill somebody just as easily with a gun as you can with a knife. That's basically the main issue. I can have all these guns and I'm not going to do anything. These are tools that I use to defend myself, defend my family, and protect us whenever we go out. Because this is a crazy world. Trust me, if I could live perfectly safe and leave my front door unlocked on that because there was no crime, yeah, I wouldn't have any guns. But unfortunately, that's not the society that we live in. Now, some of you may think like, wow, you have a lot of ammo. This is collected again over time. I'll go to Walmart or to Academy and I'll buy one box. I'll put it away in my safe. And, you know, a couple months later, I'll go buy another box, put it in my safe. All my magazines that are for my handgun are always loaded for the rifle are always loaded. And then I buy extra and I put them in my ammo cans. There are people who actually buy thousands of rounds of ammo at a time. Don't get me wrong, I would love to do that, but it is very expensive financially. Like, you have to understand that right now these handgun rounds go for about 40 cents a bullet. You have 200 in here. It can get expensive if you want to buy three or four boxes. And same goes for the rifle and different calibers, like the 308. This one for a good quality hunting round, you can get up to 80 cents, up to a dollar per bullet. Which again, imagine, a dollar per bullet. You go to the gun range, you want to shoot 50 bullets, that's $50 in ammo. Not including target, not including range time. It's expensive. So I'm not hoarding, I am just trying to, you know, stock up and this is my hobby. And, you know, I spend money on it when I can. Obviously, don't go overboard. This is our gun safe that I have, everything in here. We also have not only guns, we have important documents and all their, you know, family heirlooms and kind of stuff like that. You know, things that have a sentimental value. Um, I do have a bunch of other gun stuff. I have scabbards for my shotgun, gun bags here. I have a hard case for my marksman rifle. Again, this has accumulated a lot over time. This is, you know, a very expensive hobby because, oh, you get your gun, great. And now kind of have to transport it to and from the range and you want to transport it safely because you have spent a large amount of money investing in these guns. So this is again just part of what I use to protect myself, protect my family, and also have fun with. So whenever we make comments about Paul's guns, a lot of people ask Paul and or me, how does your wife feel about your gun collection? I will not lie, at first I hated it. She I was, did. I was like, guns are horrible, they're not good, this and that. Something just hit me, I was just like, he needs his hobby, he needs something to love, and he was very persistent on guns. And I, I was. was. Like, I am fine with you having guns, but you can't go over your monthly budget, which he can go to the gun range once a month, that's it. If I let him loose, he'll go like every week. Shut up! <laughs> Buy bullets maybe once a month, if he's good. <laughs> and if it's a gun, we have a new rule, a gun. Depending on how the money, the flow, I will let him buy one gun once a year. 
and that's stretching it. And trust me, he, that whole year is still torture because he'll be on me. I need another gun. I need another gun. I need, and I'm like, need, not want. We just bought you a gun. No, I'm not happy. We didn't buy his gun yet this year. I'm not spending over five, four hundred dollars on a gun. I love you. No. So that's where I stand. I'm supportive. You know, just don't take it overboard. <laughs> Which don't get, don't get me wrong. I have a lot of guns that are going to go in that little safe right there that are, you know, thousands of dollars for a gun because that's my next gun i want the next one i want is like 700 dollars, and once you outfit it with everything it's going to be like a thousand two hundred what do you think babe look at that eye roll mm -hmm. yeah i'm like i can't imagine spending a thousand dollars on a purse how can you do that on a gun it but keeps its value it's teaches on everybody has their hobby and i you know i'm supportive and that's all that matters yeah all right guys we hope you enjoyed this vlog this educated gun vlog <laughs> buy me another gun babe i love you no, not happening. And not with this virus even more. Paul is right. He showed a lot of people do rely on them. They have sold out. So I guess and not a lot of people hate them that much. And the thing is, is like right now in the gun shops, all the gun shops are selling out of their guns to first time gun buyers. I'm not going to go run out and buy a gun because I have plenty that I'm, I'm good with. Yeah. But people who don't have a gun say, hey, if something gets really bad here and people start breaking into people's houses for food and medicine, how am I going to defend my family? Now you understand why I have guns. Yeah. And people always say, oh, that's never going to happen. The pandemic or the boogaloo. Mm -hmm. It Listen, it, it hopefully it never does happen. But look, with this pandemic, people are already freaking out. I'm good. So, guys, we hope you enjoyed and loved. So, love and subscribe. Hit that smash like button, like my nephew says. So, for now, adieu and goodbye.